This lecture looks at the solo growth model. Um, it's the fourth in our series on technology in that model. And we're going to include labor augmenting technology. This is the other of the two ways I explicitly handle technology um, in the solar growth model. So <clears throat> the first was an exogenous growth in technology. In this case, we're going to shut that down. Let's assume there's no technological growth in A itself. That way we're not looking at that. And let's also assume there's no population growth. Okay. This way we're going to exclusively focus on labor technology growth. Now, we're going to have labor augmentation. So we're going to think about technologies that really affect labor itself. Could be type going from a typewriter to a computer, could be having access to internet, could be education, um, could be patents and other things that make people um, more effective, uh, could be um, any kind of knowledge that allows people to just know what to do better, better best practice sharing, all kinds of things. The way we're going to capture that is we're going to take our normal production function, and here I'm writing it in original levels, not in per worker, and we're going to take this and we're going to modify labor to be E times L. And the whole thing is raised to 1 minus alpha. Okay? Now, seems pretty simple. E is something that multiplies each worker. So it's very similar to this in that it's just something that is multiplied by um, each person. So I had 10 people. Now I still have 10 people, but I get more out. So if you play around with it mathematically, you'll see that E here kind of functions like this. Okay, um, if I wanted to, I could even write it um, and now this is just some constant number as well and I could treat the whole thing as A, okay? That's just to bring home to you that fundamentally although we're emphasizing and multiplies by labor, it's gonna function a lot like A in terms of enhancing and multiplying everything. One of the things it does is, if I look at the labor here, this is the output I get per worker. If I multiply and add E, I get this now. where this is a k alpha l one minus alpha and this is why because this is now multiplied by something when it goes into my production function again just like increasing a normally um we call e um efficiency Tech. The only thing we have to be careful with here is that we now have to modify everything. If you remember in our original solo growth model, we took everything and divided it by L. So that gave us this, and then we divided it through by L, and we got little y, a, little k to the alpha where little y was big Y over L, little k is big K over L. The only difference when we add the E in there is that we have to divide everything by that. I add a little E to it to remind us of that. A lot of textbooks don't, and I find it super confusing when you get in that chapter and you don't understand why y is growing because you'll frequently look at how y hat e is growing versus just how y hat is growing this is that and this is this and they don't grow the same we care about this because it is gdp per capita okay the end result of all of this
is simply the following. I modify my capital accumulation equation. <laughs> Sorry, plus one. That's got a little E by it. Where E is growing at a rate of GE. This is just like adding population, just like adding this exogenous technological growth. It works the same. Graphically, it looks the same. You shift this. You get a lower exactly like we do when we add technology into the other model in the basic form. I'm going to make two quick notes. It all functions the same. And as I pointed out here, one, it's a back door to exogenous growth A. It looks the same, it functions the same, it works the same as adding just A hat equals G and working it through my model. The only difference is it comes through the labor piece, but as I showed you, I can even rewrite this all the time so that it's just attached to A and it functions just like this. So again, you come back and you modify and you assume it's E hat and it grows at GE. Really fundamentally the same thing. The question is why and what's generating that process. And that's where the models of endogenous growth are interesting. The second thing is it is a way of escaping constant returns to scale. And I commented in one of the videos that endogenous growth theory looks at how we can get away from constant returns to scale. And if you look, we now have uh, EL all to the one minus alpha, which I can write this way. If I add up my um, exponents, I get which is greater than one. So if you go back and look at how we did constant returns to scale, you'll find out this is now increasing returns to scale. So we kind of snuck in the back door exogenous growth, and we also kind of snuck in the back door increasing returns to scale. So it's a little bit of a halfway between purely exogenous growth and endogenous growth models.